Hey again everybody, um, I'm going to walk you through a few more examples using substitution. Uh, ones that may be just a little more complicated so you can kind of see how some of the more difficult ones work. Uh, let's see, how about one that starts out like this. Okay, so looking at that there's, there's no current way uh, we would be able to solve that. There's no other tricks, there's no expanding you know, to make it easier. We can't split it apart because it's multiplication. Uh, this 1 plus x squared under the square root really messes things up. So we'll use our uh, substitution technique. This is essentially like a, almost like a reverse product rule, if you will. It's, it's more, really more like a reverse chain rule, actually. Um, so the first thing you want to do is focus in on what's causing the most trouble. The 2x is not causing the most trouble. It's causing some trouble because it's being multiplied. But I'd say the most trouble is probably being caused by the 1 plus x squared hiding in the square root. Okay. Now, some people think that, oh, I'll just make it the whole square root part. But he here's where you'll see very quickly that that's not going to help you out. Uh, you know, if we let u equal the 1 plus x squared. If I let u equal the square root of 1 plus x squared, realize what's coming next. What's coming next is a du. You're going to have to take the derivative of that. The derivative of 1 plus x squared raised to the 1 half power is going to have a negative 1 half power in it. It's going to have a chain rule kicker. And there's no way you're going to be able to resubstitute that back in. So in this case, it's really just the part that's inside. Okay, again, think of like a reverse chain rule. You're thinking about inside. So uh, if u is 1 plus x squared, du is 2x dx. How convenient, 2x dx is right here. So that's a perfect substitution. I don't have to divide by anything or do anything differently. That 2x dx turns directly into a du. So I literally, at the moment, have my du. And the only thing left is I still have the square root, so that, that didn't get substituted for, but the square root of not 1 plus x squared, but the square root of u. Okay, so let's, let's just look again what got substituted for. My 1 plus x squared became u. My 2x dx, which is right here, became du. And now I have something I can integrate. Okay, this is really just u to the 1 half du. That's a reverse power rule. So this is going to be u to the, what, 3 halves over 3 halves plus c. Clean that up. That's 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. But u is 1 plus x squared, so just bring that right back in. So I have 2 thirds 1 plus x squared to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, if you go ahead and take a derivative of this, you'll get right back to here. That's how you know you did it right. Okay, so when you substitute, look for the piece that's causing the most trouble. And then if you do it right, you should be able to substitute all the x's back in for use. Okay, hopefully that, uh, that helps a bit. And uh, let's try another example here. Let's, um, I don't know, let's see if I can find one that has some trig in it. Here we go, how about this? x cubed cosine x to the fourth plus two. Okay, well again, I'm looking at that, I'm like, okay, the x cubed isn't so great because it's being multiplied, but that's not causing the most trouble. The most trouble is this x to the fourth plus two hiding inside this cosine. Okay, so I'm going to let u equal x to the fourth plus two. du is going to be three x, oh gosh, four x to the third dx, which is pretty good. I have an x to the third dx, x to the third dx right there. The problem is I don't have a 4. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4, kind of like I did in that original example earlier. Uh, 1 fourth du equals x cubed dx. Now it's a perfect match. My x cubed dx is a perfect match for x cubed dx. So when I substitute in, that whole thing, x cubed dx, becomes 1 fourth du. So I have 1 fourth du. I still have a cosine. The cosine didn't get touched yet. But the inside part for the cosine, the x to the fourth plus 2, is now u. So if I did this right, I believe all my x's now became u's. My x to the third dx is 1 fourth du. My cosine of x to the fourth plus 2 is now cosine of u. And this I can take my integral. I can integrate. Okay, so this is going to be, uh, let's see, 1 fourth. To get to cosine, I had to start with sine of u plus c. 1 fourth sine u is x to the fourth plus 2 plus c. 
Okay, again, if you're not sure, take the derivative. 1 fourth cosine, keep the inside alone, times the derivative of what's inside. So 1 fourth cosine of x to the fourth plus 2. So here's cosine x to the fourth plus 2. Derivative of what's inside is 4x cubed. The 4 cancels out with the 1 fourth, and all you're left with is an x cubed, which is right here. That's how you know you did it right. And obviously the derivative of just a constant would be 0. So that's always a good way to check. Okay? All right, hopefully that'll kind of keep you going a little bit. I'm going to make one more video with some of the more complex ones. Uh, but this is really the, the, the middle ground. If you can do these, you'll probably be just fine. If you can't do these, then please let me know so I can try to help a little bit more. Okay, I will uh, talk to you guys in a little bit. And that's pretty much that.